Welcome back to the Where Are All My Friends podcast. First and foremost, thank you all so fucking much for listening to the first episode, for spreading the word, and for all of the positive response. That shit was overwhelming. Like, seriously, thank you. That, that meant so much to me. With that said, let's get into it. This week's guest is Scooter, or Scott Neb, and he is Jake Miller's manager and tour manager. And this is a really cool guest for me because the whole idea with this podcast is I want to do more than just interview artists. I want to tell the stories of all of these people that I think have unique, cool come up stories uh, from every different side of the industry. And I think Scooter is just the perfect example of that. Like he grew up booking shows in New Jersey and the amount that he did just on his own is incredible. And then he went on to tour manage and met Jake Miller at a very early age or the beginning of Jake's career and did such a good job and just has like this incredible mind for business and literally grew with Jake all the way up to the point of being his full on manager. And if you aren't familiar with Jake, he has had an incredibly cool career too, uh, where he's been on major labels. He's done all sorts of crazy cool touring. He's done a ton of headliners, but he also supported Fifth Harmony back in the day. Um, he's, he's really just like an amazing singer songwriter. Um, and these two, like the friendship and the bond that they have even outside of just work is incredible. Like we didn't get to talk about it on the pod, but both of them competed in Fear Factor together. Um, and like, if you just see them together, like they're genuine friends. So it's a really cool episode for me being able to interview somebody who is so smart on the business side of it, but is also just such a real person has had such like a crazy cool story. So hearing all those pieces come together is exactly what I wanted this podcast to be all about. So I really hope you feel the same way and that you get as much out of it as I did. Like, again, this is a friend of mine and I knew part of the story, but sitting down and taking the time to do the podcast episode, I learned so much more about him and that's exactly what I'm trying to do with this. So hope you like it. Let's go. All right. Well, cool. Let's, let's crack into it. So where, where are you from? I'm from uh, central Jersey, a little town called Marlboro. Marlboro, Marlboro, New Jersey. What's Zero that seven, like? Seven four six. What's that closest to? Like, what would be like your biggest? Your the main city or? It's like an hour outside of Manhattan. Okay. So, yeah. So kind of like one of the border town. Like you could like take a train or a so, like a yeah, subway tra- train or bus an hour. Okay. Either into the city. And did you, like were you a kid? Like would you go into the city a whole bunch? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're from there. Uh, how long did you like? What was what was it like growing up there? Like how long were you there for? I was there for like 22 years. Okay. So that was home. Yeah, like that's your that hometown. Was, you didn't move around a lot. Like no. you were, you were there. I lived in the same house from kindergarten through when I got the heck out of there. Damn. Really? Yeah. Damn. Okay. So and the fam still lives there. They still live there. Yeah. Did, does their family, like was their family before? <laughs> no. Okay. They were the first ones to reside there, there was another family that lived there beforehand well yeah <laughs> okay so they were super weird like there was some weird shit in the house really yeah like, like what like a light switch cover that had like 12 <laughs> holes on it for like lights like without that many lights half of them didn't fucking work <laughs> <laughs> I love that like that's like the first memory too because like I, I always know like as a kid like there's those things where you just remember it or like, whatever. Like those plastic things that go over a light switch but there's like 12 switches like flappers things. I don't know what what, yeah, what, the little, what they're called. The switch. The switch, yeah. yeah. So the, like 12 little holes and it's like where the heck do you find that? Wow, yeah, that's crazy. In Marlboro, New Jersey. <laughs> Marlboro. Marlboro, like the cigarettes. Okay, yeah. Marlboro. Spelled the exact same way. Marlboro. Marlboro. Mal, Marlboro. Mal, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're born and raised there. Yeah. Um, what was like? What was like early life like? Were you like going to the city or like like what were, what were you like in I don't know, say like, middle school, getting into high school? Like, paint me the picture of that uh, scooter. Yeah. So middle school. Uh, Middle school, I wasn't really doing much. Um, so, you know, like as far as activities, what, what the average kid would, would be doing, you know, sports or gymnastics or 
BMX or so dirt biking. No, I, I wasn't doing any of that. I oh. was uh, booking shows. Really? Yeah. Okay, so when did that start? That started when I was in middle school. Whoa. Yeah, eighth okay. grade. Okay, so then my question before that is, how did you even find music? Like, how did you obviously had to have found bands that you liked or something that got you to booking shows? So, like, bring me to the spot where you're like Yo. the internet. <laughs> okay. Late nights on the on the internet. And um, was that just like MySpace music stuff? MySpace, like that, MySpace, pure volume. Uh, I've discovered AbsolutePunk.net, and I would just get lost in there at night. Really? Yeah. So like what, like, I'm trying to think of like that, cause that's like such a wholesome period of the internet, but like what year are we at? Like this is 2003. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty so, early on. Yeah. And then, you know, where I lived, I had a, a really cool venue called Birch Hill. In Marlboro? In Old Bridge, but l- across the street from Old Bridge Good old is Marlboro. Old Bridge. How Literally could I right old across Bridge. the street. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th- that venue was there and I was always seeing, you know, the little, the little marquee with all the, t- the, uh, the bands on there. And I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to go home and look them up. Whoa. Okay. So you were just like naturally curious, yeah. like at a young age, you just see the venue yeah. and something about music just like caught. Mm-hmm. So did you ever try to play music? Uh, in elementary school? Yeah. Okay. Clarinet. Whoa. Yeah. I was never good. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> so was it by the time you were in middle school, you're like, yo, I'm not good at this, but I like music. Um, no, I knew in elementary school that I wasn't good at, at, at the clarinet <laughs> okay. because the music teacher would actually take the reed out of the clarinet. So it wouldn't make noise before like the recitals and, you know, the fall concert, the spring concert, the, the average Tuesday booster concert where they would try to raise money. They would take my read out of the clarinet and say, here you go. Here's a, here's your clarinet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you figured that out pretty early, but still liked music getting into middle school. You saw that venue, you'd look the bands up. Yeah. Um, what are like, are there any of those bands like from back then that like stand out to you? Like some of the first bands you found where you're like, yo, this were, is cool. Yeah, there were some really cool bands in New Jersey. Like the years gone by, they were a really cool band. Um, That's like one of those things, like the New Jersey music scene to me. Like, because I grew up East Coast, but in Florida, mm-hmm. and as I understand, there are very like certain cities, certain areas just had a really special pocket of bands that came oh, up. Yeah. So, like, I don't know all of them, but please, like, so tell me. So, like, the years gone by, they were just one of the coolest bands ever. You know, you, you saw them at your local VFW hall or fire hall playing on the floor, this planner rock show. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's what's up. Okay. So I want to be a part of that. Okay. All right. So you just like felt that energy with that. Mm-hmm. Were there any others? Um, there are so many, you know, uh, bed life for blue eyes were another cool one from New Jersey. Crash Romeo. Um, I remember crash Romeo. Okay. Nice. Wow. I didn't know that they were part of that. Yeah. Um, and those were like some of the first bands that I booked. Um, yeah, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade booking shows in the middle school. And once I graduated from middle school, I obviously lost that venue. So wait though, that's crazy to me that like, that still doesn't fully add up. There's still something special about you where like kid that's bad at clarinet goes into like researching bands on a, Mm -hmm. like on a marquee. How, like, I feel like it's not normal middle school thought or logic to be, you know what? I'll book these bands. Like I'll rent these venues. Like how did you have an understanding of how to do that? I didn't. My first show that I booked, I didn't know what a PA system was. I thought what the bands played their guitars through were the speakers that I didn't realize I had to rent a PA. It was like two days before a show and I'm like, I need a PA. Holy shit. Oh wow. I just booked the band that owned a PA and said, Hey, bring your PA. Don't, and you don't, and you don't got to sell tickets. And they loved it. They, They thought it was, it was, it was the best deal ever. So what was it like two days before the, you getting to the venue? The venue's like, so do you have the PA? Oh, uh, the, the venue, the venue was like a deli. <laughs> <laughs> they sold macaroni salad. They, <laughs> they close at four o'clock. My load in was at four thirty. <laughs> that feeling. I know that all too well. Like it was that a, level of touring. Yeah, it was 200 bucks for, for a venue that otherwise wouldn't be open. And for them, they're just like, yeah, and cool. It's like, yeah, after hours, points. you know, they, you know, the girl that would run the cashier was like the production manager at the venue. But again, like 
where does that come from? Like, where did you even have the inkling to ask a deli if you could throw a show there? Had you seen other people do it? Nope. That's why. <laughs> I was like, where can I go? That's crazy. And I had to go somewhere walking distance because I couldn't drive. Uh, okay. So it was very much just like that feeling of at that age, you found something that you really liked. You had whatever resource you had and you're just like, yeah. well, I have to figure this out. Yeah. And then, and then that, that started uh, my MySpace page, Scooter Productions. Wow. Yeah. And then bands started just coming to it. They're like, you book shows? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh -huh. So it started as something where you were just like genuinely kind of into the idea you wanted to book yeah. bands and then there was a demand for it. People there were was, coming to you. People were coming to me and they started booking themselves on my shows. How long did that take? Like from like your first shows to the point where people are hitting you up? Uh, I would say by like four or five shows in, it was like, no, I don't have room on a show. Whoa. Or no, I just don't want to book your band. Wow. Or no, your band is playing a show the day before and day after my show. Why, why would I want to triple book your band and then have your band split their draw in thirds for my show? Right. You know, and you just realize that from a young age that, or, you know, at least I did that you can't overplay because when you overplay, it just, you know, splits your draw. And when you do that, it kind of sucks for everyone. Well, totally. It's just crazy. Like, I feel like a lot of times the early days or any of like figuring this out, like involves some amount of failure. Like, you know, normally you're like, <laughs> you don't know and you pay a band way too much money or like something like that. Like, Been did there. you have any of that in Been, those days? Or I, I definitely have had the bands that I've overpaid for. There's been times where I've purposely just made offers to agents back in the day, knowing that I, I wouldn't get a show, but I would offer, you know, 50 to a hundred you know, percent more than what the other promoter would, but they would get the show just cause the name or something. just because they had the name because they had, because they owned the venue because they had 10 other contracts out with that same agent. So who are they going to give a show to? Yeah. You know, course. some guy that doesn't, that they're not working with or the guy that they are working with. Yeah. Damn though. That's crazy. Like that's, that's pretty nuts that at that young of an age, you had enough of a scope or you just made it go right. I mean, I guess for me knowing you, like that is kind of on brand of you consistently to just yeah. find those loopholes and make things work. But yeah. it's crazy that even back to eighth grade, it was exactly that. Oh yeah. There were times where I would get contracts from like, you know, major booking agencies and, you know, I was 16, 17 years old signing away on them yeah like that's what i'm saying they like don't i want to know more on email i know but like i want to yeah. go into that i need to know like how did you you weren't scared you weren't like i had nothing to worry about they're making a contract with, with a 16 year old <laughs> <laughs> jokes on them so you really were just like that self-aware of it like you knew you're like i'm 16 booking shows at a deli yeah. so yeah i'll see you crazy i'll just skip town but i never did Wow. Uh, and did you start making money off of it? Like, did that kind of become like your, almost like your side hustle? It, it was my main hustle. Um, but from the beginning, I was always trying to find different things. Like, you know, when I was in elementary school, my brother and I, we got on, on, on the eBay train at a really young age. Oh, wow. And we were buying stuff in bulk and then reselling it. Wow. Um, there were, you know, elementary school teachers that I would buy stuff for on eBay. Really? And they'd be like, oh, can you get this for me? Yeah. Or there were things that like they, that they wanted that I already had in my garage. <laughs> wow. And like, when you just charge like a little bit of like a premium? Yeah, they'd be like, you know, you know, I, I need that A. But here's that McDonald's Happy Meal toy that you wanted. Whoa. That's like such a, again, like just that, like that grind, right? Like that, like spirit of like, as a kid figuring out a way to like make that extra dollar. Like, I feel like yeah. that's, it's crazy how many people I've talked to in music or anything where it's like that spark of like that early hustle. Yeah. Okay. So that goes way back. Middle school, you're booking shows. Uh, does this carry on into, no, you lost, you said you lost the venue. I, I lost the middle school auditor auditorium. I only did three and a half shows there i think i say half because i don't remember the, the third and fourth show were just a, a fucking blur really and why like i it was just there were like half shows because they weren't 
fully booked. There were, you know, because I, I, I wanted to get as many bands as possible. But then what happened was I had too many bands to put on one show. So I had to split up the show into two. So it was like three on one show, four on another. Um, but that was like at the tail end of middle school. And I couldn't, you know, I, I had to go out, go out, go out with a bang. So, so that was, it was like, like a little mini festival. Wow. So it was like three and a half. Damn. And like, what were you like? Did they like, were they popping off? Like, did you sell any of them out? Like oh, the, how quickly did it do well? They were doing amazing. You know, my mom was running the snack stand. Um, the janitor were the sound and, and lights. You know, so, so the guy that would collect the garbage at during lunchtime. Yeah. Was like my sound engineer. That's nuts. He didn't know what he was doing. It, I just like, I don't know. There's something again, crazy to me. Like I'm thinking about the era, like 2003, 2004, you say like right around there. Mm -hmm. Is that just middle school, uh, 2001 graduated in 03. Do you think like, do you think that same scene is still in Jersey like that? Or like where you were at, or was it really like a special place in time where like pure volume in my space and all the right things were aligning mm -hmm. and there was just so many bands or whatever. Oh, uh, the, the market was so oversaturated. Yeah. Um, and it was a cool time though for the market because everything there that was 500 cap and over were just controlled by Live Nation or AG and they still are. And the smaller rooms, you know, were kind of like a free for all. So if you think about it, like if you were in those rooms, you never had the competition, but you were the competition to the bigger guys. Because you would book the local bands, they would book, you know, the you know the mid-sized touring act need two locals on the show, but you you already had the locals on your show, so they couldn't play the other shows because the bigger guys would think, oh well, this band that I would need to sell fifty tickets to open up for, you know, Kill Hannah, you know, who was a band that was touring at the time, that band, yeah, you know. Um, or like an FTSK, yeah. you know, the two local bands that you need to support that, they would already be booked on my show. So, you know, selling 30 to 50 tickets for me for whoever I had. Well, um, why is that though? Because like, I remember in those early days, like if you were a local band opening up for like the mid-level touring act was like a big deal. Like that was kind yeah. of a bragging, right? So how were you winning them over for your shows? Was it just that you're like, yo, I'll pay you or... It was a way better deal with, yeah, paying yeah. them for X amount of tickets that they sold. Um, you know, the bands knew that they wouldn't be going on 10 minutes after doors. Yeah. And if you had built in a fan base and if like you, if you had kind of proven that like people will show up, like if the local shows are popping off up to 500 kids, that's yeah. still crazy. And, and, and my local shows were doing the, about the same attendance as the bigger shows okay. too. That's the missing piece. Yeah. Be, because I had the built in fan bases at, Got it. at, at my venue. Um, I was promoting all the shows in the middle school and the high school. Okay. Um, so it was like for the bands, it was like, you're either, you can be the hometown hero in a really packed crowd with a built in excited fan base, mm -hmm. get paid, be taken care of, or go open up for the mid-level touring act and kind of be treated like shit. Exactly. Damn. Um, so you did corner like a really special thing there. Oh yeah. Um, and then, so once I graduated from middle school, uh, obviously I started high school in the fall and I went to a battle of the bands at my rec center in my town, the Marlboro rec center. And there were three bands that played this battle, this battle of the bands, all three bands won. What? I know. Right. All three bands won the same prize. Oh, and it was like a, hundred dollar gift card to the local music shop in in the, the next town over was you think that shit was rigged or you think that they genuinely that the judges are there sweating and they're just uh, like it was everything 100 percent rigged they had <laughs> they had first second and third place already picked and i didn't think that with a three band bill you would go first second third place you would just go winner and two losers that's kind of the way that i would look at it um, Wait, so it, uh, three bands played and three bands won? Yep, and they all won the same prize. I was pissed. I, I wanted to go home seeing someone cry. I paid $5 for that Battle of the Bands, and all three bands won. Incredible. When you go to a battle, you want to see someone cry. I know, that's the worst battle ever. Yeah. It's just a participation <laughs> contest. That's just 
Come Absolutely. watch these people participate. So, okay, but tell me the point. Sorry, we tangent. So just like a couple of days later, I went to the rec center. I'm like, hey, who who put on that Battle of the Bands? It was so awesome. And they're like, oh, uh, her over there. And I'm like, hi, how's it going? Just wanted to let you know I went to the Battle of the Bands, and uh, I think I could do a better job. Outright, with, like you with, just said with, that. With booking a show, yeah. I I told you, her. You didn't, you weren't like, I think I could judge better. I think that I could pick. I didn't see any judges there. <laughs> Okay, so it was on the promotion side. Yeah. Um, so, all, so all three bands won. Two of the bands that were on this Battle of the Bands were previous bands that I booked in middle school. Oh, you had known them? Oh, I've known them. And they were the two most terrible bands on the Battle of the Bands. Oh. Yeah. I was hoping they were both going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to her. I go to her and I tell her, hey, I think I could do a better job. This is October, so I say, "Hey, can I get a date in December?" Because mm-hmm. obviously, I, I don't want a date tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I want one. You know, six seven weeks out, yeah. I guess I could book a show and find the right lineup. Yeah, um, secure. You know, a a proper PA system. Now I know what a PA system is. I can now get a proper PA system and rent the PA. Um, go on Pure Volume. Go on MySpace. Find the new bands talk to the kids in the high school, see who the new band is in the high school that, you know, that just formed. And, you know, they have all these friends that want to come see them and all their friends are going to buy tickets. Yeah. It's like you say it so simply, but I think it's just like, that was so natural to you of like all the pieces of like putting in the hard work and like Mm -hmm. listening to your audience, listening to what people want, doing the pure volume research. Like, that was just natural to you. Yeah. Like that was just the, that was a scooter. That was me. So all of the parts that would have been hard for somebody phoning it in, you were just doing. Yeah. Um, so I get the rec center, start booking a couple of local showcases there. They all go amazing. Um, the first, uh, natural the, or the first nat- national touring band that I brought in, I should remember I had, um, from like two shows previous, I had like made like, a shoebox full of money and I'm like, okay, like I now have like five hundred dollars. Yeah. That I can like send an offer to a touring band. And I remember on MySpace I sent an offer to All Time Low. And oh. at the time they were just like doing like weekend warrior stuff. I'm like, hey guys, you guys want to play in New Jersey? You know, yeah. I got like three hundred dollars. Knowing that they're gonna want to negotiate. Right. I got no response. Yeah. And again, um, we're at what, like 2004? Th- yeah, this is when they had like their EP out. Or that's 2004. Like 2004. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Um I'm like, hey guys, like, you guys want to play a show in New Jersey? Like, you know, six hours from Baltimore? No answer. So I reach out to another band from Jersey and they respond back immediately. They're like, we'll do it, but can we do a little bit more? Because we're all taken off from work that day. Mm. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, like here's, you know, 400 and a catering budget. And nice. there you go. That's five hundred dollars right there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and what was that band? That band was uh, Bad Life for Blue Eyes. Is that was that another? Uh, yeah, that was like like that was the the first ever national touring band that uh, I put a contract out for. That I'm sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And how did you know how to write a contract? Just because other oh, people had sent them to you at that well, point? Well, they would send me the contracts. Like their oh. agency would, would, would send it to me. And I would just put my signature on there. Sure. And then I would go to, go to the uh, office in the school and fax it. I'd fax back to the agent. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they're going to like go back and like, what is this phone number? No. Yeah. Like n- no one Doesn't ever thought matter. about Googling a phone number back then. No. Like Google, I don't think even Google like operated that way. Like, no. Everyone was still using Yahoo and Ask Jeeves yeah. back then. Yeah. Was it Ask Jeeves? There was one of them you could text Cha Cha. You could text Cha Cha. Yes. That shit was crazy. Well, they're like humans on the, on That's the other right. side of Cha Cha. Yeah, they got paid like, like 15 or they, I forget what it was. They got paid some amount per question answered. Yeah. So you didn't even feel bad texting them asking them bad questions or dumb questions because they were just getting paid. And then, you would, and then you would pay per text message that you would send to Cha Cha because it was before like unlimited texting. Well, yeah, you weren't paying for the question to be answered, but like whatever your 10 cent texts. Yeah. Were. Yeah. And that's, that was so annoying. Like knowing that every time you sent it like a, like, hi, 10 cents. Yeah. Cha-cha. Hi, I'm 16. How do I write a show or a contract show? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, so you put in an offer for them. They accept it. They, they come down. They accept it all good. Um, I don't think I ever heard back from all time low mm. about the, yeah, you know, about the offer. Um, it's all good. Is there? I'm so like I'm hoping that there's like a callback to that where you like hear from them later on. Oh, I hope so. Oh, it's still okay. I so hope that so. just that was out <laughs> into the void. Nothing happened. No. All right. So you book. Tell me the band name. Uh, bed life for blue eyes. Bed life for blue bed, eyes. Bed light. Bed light. Bed light for blue eyes. Nice. Okay. So you book them, and mm-hmm. how's that show? Tell me about that, that show. Was amazing. Um, I would say there's probably about 300 kids there. But bands, bands used to love to play my shows because they'd be stacked with local bands. I had a built-in crowd. Um, I got in, into a, a routine where there was a show once a month at the rec center on a weekend. And, you know, I would be strategic. You know, I would play it smart. I would look at the school calendar and be like, okay, that's homecoming weekend. I'm not going to book a show that weekend. That's prom weekend. Not going to book a show that weekend. There's this shit going on. I'm, I'm not going to book a show that weekend. Just find a Friday or Saturday that I can put a show together. Um, so we'll do that. And I don't remember. That was so long ago. <laughs> Damn. But it, so like that just like how long did that keep going? So like you you are clearly leveling up. You've built your fan base. Kids are coming to your shows. You're putting offers out to regional low, or like touring yeah. acts. Um. So like, is that all of the rest of high school or like, how long does this keep going? Like how, how far do you build this? This, this went until a couple of years after high school and oh. then, yeah. And then once I graduated high school, I realized, okay, like I now have a car. I now have more time doing classes online for a uh, community college and I, I can now get more venues and you know, it, like what do I need to do? So I, I, I teamed up with another uh, concert promoter in New Jersey called Jersey Shows, um, and they were they kind of dominated the 500 cap and under rooms in Jersey. So they had the fire halls, they had the VFW halls, they had exclusives on all those rooms. So you know, I couldn't go in there and book a show myself. Um, and it was smart because you know they have contracts out as well for other touring bands, and the last thing that you want is for Scott Nepp to go into a venue. And get a venue shut down. Mm. You know, meanwhile, Jersey Shows has contracts out for four years strong, let's just say. And I shut down the venue. Right. Not affiliated with, with, with them. You do something stupid. And then and now every other show everyone. that they have is now right. canceled. Or they need to move to another venue. And that's not you know, an easy task. So when, instead of going up against them, you saw a window to join them yeah, or to work with them, to work with them. And then, you know, it allowed me to book, to book a show in Jersey and put an offer in for New York, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And Hey, I have a, now a, a more enticing offer for, for you, Mr. Agent, Mrs. Agent. Yeah. Cause you're um, doing three shows instead of one. Exactly. And, and they know you're going to treat them right. And you know, better offers too. So I'm able to uh, make that happen. Okay. So, and I take it to, with how savvy you are with all of this, you probably weren't having to work like another job in high school or anything like that. Like you were probably able to like pay for whatever high school bills or whatever you needed yeah. off of just booking shows. Just booking shows. Uh, I never had any other job um, other than I worked at a county fair for a week making coffee. Wow. And I th- that's where my love, my, my love of coffee came from. There it is for, for all the listeners. Yeah. Scooter, Scooter is a coffee guy and yeah. is kind of good at making coffee. It's nice. I think so. Nice espresso machine at home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So <laughs> you worked at a county fair making coffee. That's crazy. I didn't realize that like legit, like music has been your life, like your profession yeah. forever. Yeah. A long time. Was that's it, nuts. Was it 2019 right now? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's what, what like a lot to 20 years, I guess? 20. No, maybe, no, maybe no. not. 15. 15. We could agree on a long ass time. Yeah, a long ass time. Okay, so you're getting out of high school, taking online classes, 
team up with them, putting in offers for Jersey, New York, Philly. Um, and is there like, does it feel like again, like a level up? Like, are you making more money? Are you being able to book bigger bands, pulling better things? Like, what's it like? Like paint yeah, me there, that picture. There, you know, there is definitely more money there because there's more shows. So instead of doing one show a month, I now have, you know, you know, Jersey shows, they'll be doing five to 15 shows a weekend between all, all their venues. Sometimes, you know, you know, some venues are all ages and at night we would do a 21 and up show. So you stay and, busy. Oh yeah. So there were, there were a lot of times where we would have a, like a, you know, on a Sunday matinee doors at one and then doors at nine Damn. and have like, you know, an hour to grab food across the street. Damn. So just shows. Yeah. Just that was shows. Your and anytime you weren't doing school or anything like that, like you're just doing this, just, just promoting just shows. shows, putting shows together. Okay. So then you graduate high school, graduate high school. Did you go to college? I, well, I was taking those classes. online. You, oh, your college was online and call. Uh, sorry. I missed that. Yeah. No, high okay. school was all in, in school. Oh, got it. Okay. So this yeah. is all happening. This is you're in college, but you're booking these shows. Everything's yeah, online. And, got it. And I I'm not even that. doing the schoolwork because yeah. I have no time. Right. Mm. And you probably by this time have a good enough idea where you're like, I'm going to do this music thing. Yeah. So like what language were you arts in college and, for? and all these things. Um, I was working toward a humanities uh, degree. And why um, did you pick that? It was the only, I was so late with enrolling that <laughs> it was the only classes that I can like pick and then like have it be like, all right, I'm now positioned to have this degree. So was that pressure from your parents? Like, it, it seems like if it were up to you, you would have just gone full into shows. Um, there was some pressure from them. There was, you know, all right, you, you know, I want to keep, you know, student status, you know, oh. so, you know, just, just to kind of keep busy. Okay. So it yeah. just kind of seemed like the right yeah, thing to do. You know, it was like, eh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. You know? I guess too, like you and I, like, I guess you're a little bit older than I am, but like it, it there definitely was a thing of like, you just go to college. Like it, it, it's only more recently that it's becoming like a very clear alternative that you don't have to go to college. Yeah. So it kind of just probably made sense. Yeah. I, you know, college is for, you know, some people that want to just do something, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or people that want to make something. So you don't. just, yeah. Like you just associated, you're like, well, I want to be successful. I want to keep building yeah. stuff. So I should go to college. And I want to meet people and I want another avenue to promote my shows. So it was like, oh, so you was just like, saw it as a business. You just saw another network. <laughs> you know, like I was thinking, like, oh, like the college has like some cool venues on oh. campus. Like maybe I can get in there. You're like doing the math. You're like, this semester is only going to cost me. Or you like get like, it was like scholarships. It was like yeah, it was like after all this financial aid, it cost me like you know seven hundred fifty bucks a semester. You're like make that that's, like one that's show. Great. Yes, that's <laughs> that's great. I'm gonna do that. You just got the built-in network. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, did you graduate college? Uh, I didn't. I still have, uh, I think there's like six or eight credits left and then, and then I can, can get a piece of paper that said that I spent money for nothing. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. So why didn't you finish? Because that's back in Jersey and I have no desire to finish it online. Well, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like back in that moment. So like you're oh. in there, you're booking shows, you're putting all this together. Doing I just started touring. Online. I started touring and, ah. and I was like, all right, like, you know, it was before, you know, Wi-Fi was available everywhere. Right. You know, that was, you know. Yeah. So was, if you're touring, you're not doing yeah, that. Yeah. You know, like you're in a van eating ramen, you know, you're, you know, six people deep in a Motel 6. So take me to touring. Where did touring come from? Like, what was the first band or like, where did it go from you booking shows to wait, now you're on the road? Um, I think the first, the the first touring band that I worked with was a band that uh, actually won a battle, a, a battle of the bands from Jersey shows. These damn um, battle of the bands. The battle of the bands that never stop. New Jersey is like the home of the battle of the bands. <laughs> 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 it's um, but yeah, so like this band, Soul Fedge Radio, they won the battle, and uh, with the battle was like, hey, you know, you're being you know, a battle of the bands, and the winner is gonna get it was like. 10 grand that the company invested into them and with, with, it was like merchandise and touring and all these things. And, you know, a lot of, of, uh, trades that we learned from the, 
from the DIY hustle. So like DIY, like I learned how to book tours. Yeah. You know, learning how to book a tour was for me pretty, pretty easy. You know, I was able to, you know, reach, you know, I had a pulse on the other promoters and the guys outside of New Jersey and all right, I was able to, to tour a band for like a week straight and then, it would, you know, in the Northeast and then it became, okay, now I can go for two weeks and I could tour a band down to Florida and back. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, now I could do three weeks and cause I have the, now the contacts in West Virginia and Nashville and Dallas and Chicago. So there's a three week tour for a band in Jersey. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, discovered, you know, uh, Polestar. <laughs> yeah. But then that just opened the, the floodgates for, you know, national touring. And did it all start with that band? Was that band coming to you saying, hey, help us book a tour? Um, that band was in the Battle of the Bands. They won the battle. I would confidently say that they were undeniably the best band in the battle of the bands obviously because they won yeah um and you know with it came you know hey we're gonna invest money in you yeah and we're going to put you guys on the road right because that's what the prize is but what was the connection between them and you like did you guys just become friends through that we or? didn't really become friends until after they won the battle we mm. didn't really know the bands that much okay you know and and, and that's was on was honestly the best way to go about it. Sure, by you know, just booking the bands and be like, hey, like, you want to be in the battle? Like, there's a twenty ticket minimum if you want to be eligible. Sure. So sell your twenty tickets, yeah. and you know, the bands that sold five tickets, they obviously didn't make yeah. it to the next round. Yeah. The bands that met the minimum, they kept moving on, 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 and after like six, eight rounds, they made it to Starland Ballroom where we held the. Uh, the finals yeah. and this band won. And afterward it was like, Hey guys, now we're, we shall be friends. So, you know, what's your names? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you become friends, become friends. We figure out what, what they want to do, what their vision is. And okay, well we have 10 grand now. Let's figure out how we can use this 10 grand for you and bring your vision to life. Wow. Cause we want to deliver. Right. To, you know, um, so some of the first touring that uh, I started picking up was like um, some like, like, like soft ticket shows, like building the contacts at like Six Flags. And hey, like, let me get my uh, bookends at Six Flags for a band. Let me find a date in Texas. Let me find a date in Jersey. Let me find a date in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And just build my bookends there and be like, okay, I'm, like, I'm now going to tour a band. And I know that on... This Friday, they're here, and on that Saturday, they're there, and I need to now connect the dots. Um, so you just took that on? I just took that on, and then, and then just started fucking shit up, and yeah, just, yeah, and just accomplished. That's incredible. And I mean, again, too, like, it goes along with your story of just, like, you kind of fearlessly take these things on, but, like, that excitement is there like just like that spark that makes you care more is there oh and I, and and i still get you know just as excited yeah you know when like an email comes and i'm like i got an email i love like watching you smile right now like <laughs> just like seeing you be like actually stoked yeah. or if i get something in like my mailbox mm -hmm. i get excited even if it's like a val pack i'm like this is great why is that because i think that physical mail is such a great thing i don't know why Okay, respect. I, I feel like I'm, I have a mailbox in front of my house. I'm, I, I want there to be shit inside of it. Yeah, no, I guess I do. If I go there and there's nothing in there, I just don't feel wanted. I'm going to start writing you letters. You should. I should do that. I just bought envelopes today. You did? I did. I just, I did self it, something. You know, the uh, self sealing ones? I'm not that pull fancy. The tab. Yeah, I'm, I'm so old. You, fashioned. So you got to lick them. And yeah, it's, it's all right. I don't send that many letters. Okay. Do you all have, right. Do you so have stamps? I need to get stamps. Don't waste your money on stamps. Well, what am I going to do? Just go to the post office. They'll put a sticker on it. Oh, I guess I could do that, but then I can't just drop it in the box. Whatever. Okay. So you're touring. You, so what happened? So were you touring with that band for an extended amount of time or from there, what were you doing on tour? Were you, did you start as tour manager? Like what was that? It was TM. It was merch. It was, you know, I was the oldest one out of all of them by like not that many years by, you know, two, two or three years. But you had it together the most. Yeah, I still had it together. You know, I, I was 18. So, you know, Motel 6 is you could be 18 and book a Motel 6. So, yeah. 
you know, I was I was the eighteen year old, so my name you know was like, Hi, I'm I'm Scott, I'm here, here like here's my ID, my credit card. Yeah. I got the whole process down. Yep. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so you're doing that, you're touring with them and kind of TM, kinda of everything, the responsible yeah. one out on the road. Uh how long are you with them? Uh I was with them for a decent amount of time. Uh maybe like two and a half years of oh, wow. consecutive touring. Wow, okay. Um, they put out a EP that is really good. Um, I still listen to it. Nice. Yeah. Um, Do you, you can can you share it with me? I can. I'll 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 send you a Dropbox link to it. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and we would just tour, and then that band, after a couple of years, they all you know once once all the members all graduated high school, you know. A couple members wanted to go to college and, and do the college thing. The other, other guys continued as as, a, as another band, and by now, you know, the ten grand is already spent. Sure, um, you know, ten grand goes pretty fast, you know. But in the beginning, it's like you're buying merch for the band with yeah. that with that ten grand, and you're teaching them like, hey, when you buy thirty six t shirts, you don't take the, you know, if you sell the shirts for ten bucks each, you don't take the three hundred sixty bucks and go to the movies and buy popcorn for you and your girlfriend, you're taking that 360 and you're buying, you know, 72 t-shirts with that. So you can keep replenishing your merchandise. Um, so stuff like that is what you, you know, you're teaching to the band. You know, you don't take the, take the merch money and you put it in your gas tank because then you're never going to be able to reorder merch. And did that come natural to you just off of the, sheer volume of shows that you're booking and seeing it just yeah again and, and, again. and just common sense yeah 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 um okay so it but you gotta explain like these common sense stuff to people that don't really like that don't have the money or that, that just don't realize how to spend the money wisely so then it kind of becomes clear that they're not fully in it fully invested you're still just as passionate and just as fired up about it so some of them go to college. What happens to you? Um, so at this time, the the band kind of does like a little hiatus. They, you know, they make a record of songs that I don't think those songs ever got released. Um, and you know, there becomes a new winner of the Battle of Bands, obviously. And you know, I'm doing small touring stuff with them, getting so, them set up. Um, the next winner of the Battle of the Bands, they were a l little bit older. Um, and they had like a, a sense of touring already. Um, they didn't really have the contacts to tour, but they knew, okay, like, all right, I'm buying t-shirts and I know that I need to rebuy t-shirts. Like they had that down. Yeah. Um, so there, there was a little bit less, you know, a little bit less handholding with them. Um, but after a short while, that band, uh, dissolved, we could say, um, I don't think they really, think they really broke up. I think they just kind of dissolved. Yeah. Um, but again, you're still in it. You're I'm still in it. Still doing your thing. Yeah. Um, okay. And then, so are you back home in Jersey then for a minute? Or are you? I'm still in Jersey. Okay. I'm still in Jersey until uh, I, I I made my escape from Jersey in uh, 2015. So what happens there? Uh, t move out to L.A. And how did you know to do that? Like, so, because that's actually, that's a decent amount of time. Like, because you're from like you're dropping out of college, you're touring with bands, but so like, so there's just about like a, I guess five years or so of you just on the road, touring with bands, helping with battle of the bands doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then bring me to moving to LA. What was changing? Like, how did you know it was time to move to LA or how, to, what was that? Um, there, that's kind of where, where, the, where the wind blew. Um, the artist that I was working with was going out to LA to record and, it was like, okay, well, like there's an opportunity to go out to LA. There's another bedroom in the apartment. Like I should, I should go Yeah. because I went to LA a couple of years before that. And I was like, I loved LA, but I want to experience LA yeah. the way that I want to do it. Not, Oh, I'll wake up in the morning, eat breakfast at the hotel with the family. Then we go to the walk of fame, you know, like there's like, there's still shit that I see now. And it's like, Oh my God, I remember seeing that. The first time I was here. Yeah. Like when you're just like on vacation with yeah. your family, That's you know, crazy. like the Hollywood bowl. Like I remember seeing that, um, you know, I think my dad and my brother went somewhere and I took one of those LA sightseeing tour buses and yeah. it stopped in front of Amoeba. 
And oh, I walked wow. in there and I missed the bus oh. afterward. And I remember I, I almost started crying. But then I was like, oh, wait. I just walk inside and I'd say, excuse me, what's the number for a taxi company? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you had your street smarts yeah, too. Yeah, you, I was like, the first time I'm like, I'm like oh no. <laughs> and it's like, oh wait, smarten up. <laughs> but Uber so, wasn't a thing, so it was, oh, yeah. you know, and I, I was in, you know, I was like a sophomore in high school, so I, I had a flip phone. Yeah. I probably couldn't even get Uber on it, even if Uber existed. No. Um, so... Okay, so you're you move back to LA. You you were vacationing family, you saw it, you knew you liked it. And is that artist like was the artist that you moved out here with like is that a piece of the story or you, did you still work with that artist? How, how did this come together? Uh yeah, I I still work work with that artist. That artist is Jake Miller. Okay. Um, Cuz that's a pretty integral piece of your story. Yeah. So when did you guys meet then? Uh we met for the first time right before his first ever tour. Uh, and that was in 20 20- 13. Okay. So two years before you move out here. Yeah. And had you were like, were you working with him out there? Or you guys just met? No, we, we just met. Uh, I liked and, and subscribed to his YouTube channel. Nice. And one day he announced his first ever tour emailed, you know, just like a generic email at jakemiller.com. Got a phone call the next day from, uh, his dad and we had a great conversation and, you know, some time went by and it was like, look, like, you know, I would love to help. You know, I could sell merch. I could do this. I could do that. I could do magic tricks, maybe. Mm. <laughs> so you saw something special in him in those early days of that. Because by yeah. that time, you've, you've booked a lot of talent. Yeah. And it was like, OK, like I've seen other bands at this level before. Mm-hmm. So I know the work that goes into it, this. Yeah. Um, and I've done this before. So, you know, for me, it was a piece of cake. Yeah. Cause it was like, all right, like I, re- I already know the amount of time that goes into this. I know, you know, it's exhausting. I know that it's, it absorbs a lot of time. Yeah. So, and you're saying like the amount of time for him to get where he was at just on the DIY grind. Yeah. It was, it was still a DIY grind for him at that time. I would definitely yeah. say so. You know, your, you know, your first two tours, you're touring in, in the trenches. Yeah. No matter what size venue you're really going through. Yeah. Um, you know, you could be a mega star, but you know, you're still eating shit on tour. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you get in touch just as a genuine fan. Yeah. His dad calls you and you're like, yeah, I'll do whatever. I just want to come out. I want to help. Yeah. And what's the response? Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Tight. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So they're into I'll it. I'll see you in Minneapolis. Okay. Yeah. And what year is that? When is that? That that's the same year. That that's uh, t- twenty thirteen, um, and first tour, and yeah, it was two shows. The first two shows of the tour sold out. Minneapolis, Chicago sold out. What venues? Um, oh wow, um, Chicago was Lincoln Hall. Um, and how big is that? That was like a five hundred cap room. Okay. Um, Minneapolis was the. The first date was at this venue called uh, Elixir. Okay. Um, but that venue shut down, I think, shortly after. Um, what size? It was like a 300 cap room. Okay. So three to 500 yeah. selling out, out the gate. Yeah. Um, and then the next day was also in, in Minneapolis. First first two shows were, were mini back to back. And that was, I believe that was like Skyway Theater maybe or... One of those venues out there. Yeah. I remember there was like brick on the wall. Oh man, I wish I knew. I, I only know a couple Minneapolis venues. But. You know what, it was Mill City. You what, yeah. Mill it, City it, Nights? Mill or? City Nights. Yeah, okay. Yes. Downstairs um, there. And what, what cap there? Uh, I, I think about the same, 250, 300. Okay, so like these two to 500 cap rooms are selling out. That's a pretty good sign. Yeah. Um, so it, it was... It, it, it was Weekend Warrior style, you know, so it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, go home Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, the first round of touring was built around his his college schedule. So it was like, you know, one, you know, there, the weeks were just kind of weird, um, but it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, fly home Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fly home Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, so... 
it was just like, all right, so one one weekend we're gonna do here, next weekend we're gonna go there, um, the next weekend we're gonna be down in Florida, you know, doing you know Jacksonville down to Fort Lauderdale, um, yeah, and kind of you know touching everything thing in between. There was some uh, early radio promo that he was doing back then with the first label that he was on. So you were just like thrown into this. Yeah, I I, I didn't really know what I was like. I knew what I was getting into as far as like the venues went. Mm-hmm. Everything else was like new, mm. but still maybe like second nature. Like I already had like an inkling of like what, 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 what happened there. Mm-hmm. I never did it, but it was like, all right, like I could figure it out. Well, I mean, if leave it, bring it back to the kid that's signing contracts at 14 to 16 years old for shows in delis fearlessly. Like, I think you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So all that's happening, like 2013, all that 2013, 14, 15, 15 was a crazy year. 16 was a crazy year. 17 was a crazy year. So it just kept Ni- going. 19 is a crazy year. It just kept going. Yeah. So you get thrown into it. Obviously, you guys are getting along. You guys still work together now. So you do a couple of years while you're doing that, going all over, doing the tours. You're still living in Jersey. Yeah. Well, where's he living at that time? He's in uh, South Florida. Okay. So you're just meeting up when like anytime something would come together. Yeah. And then he comes to you and he's like, yo, I'm moving to LA. He, yeah, we were, I was like toward like the tail end of our tour in uh, 2015 and he was like, or uh, 2014 rather. And he was like, Hey, in like a couple months, I'm going to be moving to LA. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, cool. I'm like, cool. I'll pack my bags. Yeah. Um, we also had like a bunch of, so it was like the, that tour ended it was a couple days before that tour ended a couple days before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember that we were on the road for Thanksgiving I celebrated Thanksgiving with our bus driver in like Bloomington, Indiana. Sick. It was really cool. <laughs> those mem- like it's always so memorable, right? Like those yeah. times, like you Every- could- everyone flew home and I stayed back. I'm like, no, I want to hang with uh, the bus driver That's in amazing. Bloomington. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he calls you. He tells you, and he, and he says, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm moving to LA in January. There's another bed in the apartment. You want to come?" Damn. And it was like, yeah, no brainer. I'm there. So it was a pretty snappy decision for you. Yeah. And was that because like you remembered it from tour, from going with your family and you're just like, this is like, I want to go do this myself on my yeah. terms. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I thought it'd be a cool experience to go out to LA. He was recently signed to a major label and it was like, Hey, like if I'm going to do it, why not do it now? Yeah. And there's, you know, this is the opportunity. Yeah, like it was clear enough to you where you're just like, all of this is aligned. Yeah. Let's go. And, you know, it got to the point where, all right, it's now time to book flights home from L.A. back to New Jersey and him to Florida. Yeah. And I'm, you know, mid-February comes around and the apartment lease is over on uh, March 1st. And it's, I, I kind of want to stay here. I, I made a core fan, you know, uh, a, a core gr- group of friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, met enough people, realized how LA is like the most easiest place to be if you're trying to move somewhere and you can literally live anywhere. Mm. People will will rent you their bathtub. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I was staying on floors. I was sharing bedrooms. I was sleeping on air mattresses. I lived, you know, the first place that that I lived in LA was like an hour south of downtown LA. Wait, so he went back? He went back, I, and I stayed. Why did he want to go back? Why, why didn't I want to go back? Well, yeah, like, so you are there for a year with him? Uh, we were in L.A. for, no, it was only three months for, like, that recording time. So it was, like, oh. January through, the, through, through March. And then he, he was planning on moving back to L.A. after the summer tour that was coming up. Oh, I thought that that, like when you first got here, that was the full on official move. It, for, for me, it was. And you knew that. And, and I just made it that. Mm-hmm. Um, so March came along. He went back home to South Florida. His DJ at the time that I was sharing a room with in the apartment um, that he was living in also went back home. They both knew that, that they were coming back out to L.A., but there was no point in signing a lease in 
the top of March for an apartment, knowing that in two and a half months we're leaving for you know, six months of touring a very long time. So you, you were just like, fuck it. I'll go rent some bathtubs and hang out. Yeah. I'm just going to hang out in LA and you know, I, I was living a couple, you know, like I said, an hour South of downtown LA. What, when you live anywhere South of downtown LA, you're not coming to Hollywood. No. Any ample amount of time. So your lifestyle is, you know, Different. the South Bay. Yeah. Okay. So then tell me like, cause there's so many pieces that like, I have, I have some very, I'm trying to put a couple of things together. So he signs to a major label. You're down here, South LA. What are you, what are you doing? Cause like the scooter that I know, like, I feel like there's gotta be some hustle. Oh, like I, when you're not on the road with him, like, like what were, what were you doing in LA at that time? I, I was uh, picking up other gigs. So just like, you know, selling merch a random night at a venue okay. just to make a couple bucks yeah. or, hey, you want to go on tour for two weeks? Yeah, sure. I'll go on tour for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, like, I'll, like I'll pick up anything, you know, just hey, grinding. you want to come sell merch for, yeah. for us on tour for two weeks? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. You know, like put me anywhere and, and I'll do it better than, than, than anyone else. You've just always had that that fearless confidence. Because I've done in. it before. So and I mean, I you back it. it. Yeah. Okay. So because there's another piece. He signs to the major, what, 2015? That was uh, 2015. Okay. Does he have management at that time? He does. Okay. So you, by this time, are just like the fearless tour manager. Like, you're doing everything you do. You're mm-hmm. the TM and some, basically any problem, any whatever. You're going to figure it out. You're yeah. doing the radio, the press. Okay. So take me to then where you're at Cause like, I know like some things changed there and I know you do so much more than that now. Mm -hmm. So bring me through that progression. You're out here with Jake touring, living in LA, grinding away like you do. Best friends. But then it keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. So where does it evolve even more? So it it evolves to, you know, Hey, you know, we're, we're best friends. So, you know, we're now talking about, you know, stuff that people are saying and it's like well you know listen to them but like i don't think that's right you know some things you know i I don't know about that you know like or i've seen someone else do that and they failed by doing that and it just doesn't work you know whatever that person said just doesn't work you know it's just like the textbook answer but you need to give it to some people and just so you there's, there's nothing else that you can say yeah so you know here's the textbook response and you're probably going to fail, but you just need to hear it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so there are certain things where we would just talk about like random things and be like, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, stuff changed. Um, previous manager went his own way. Mm-hmm. They, they, they split, they, they split up and now it's just like, Hey, look, When's like, that? this is, uh, almost two years ago. Okay, so a little bit over a year. Seventeen. Yeah. Ish. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we we continue touring, and then s- stuff happens, and we and and we leave the previous agency, and when that happens, it's like, hey, like, I I know how to book a tour. Right. You know, because that like that that moment, and like I remember that's kind of when we were becoming friends. And there was, again, just like this fearlessness that I'm seeing has now been a pattern in your life for a long time. We're like, I think we both know, like if a man, if a band on a major label, an artist on a major label has a full team, an agent, your label, your manager, like that's it, right? You're going. And like, if that starts to get disrupted or if you part ways with any bit of that team, it can be a real speed bump or it can like really like end or ruin dynamics and careers, like kind of before they can even get started. But that was never a concern for you. And I remember kind of meeting you and becoming closer friends in that moment where like, I almost wanted to be like, wait, so you're not, you're not scared. And you're like, no. And I'm like, well, why? And like, I'm starting to learn like, oh, you're doing a lot. Yeah. So just wear all the hats. And that was you. Yeah. So, and I mean, again, like, it's just so interesting to me because I, I saw it in real time, mm-hmm. right? I remember, was the album, it was like a bed in a city? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, 2 a.m. in L.A. Okay. That, that's, that's my bed on 
the album cover. <laughs> we brought my bed in the back of a U-Haul van <laughs> uh, downtown LA at about two in the morning. Yeah. And we constructed my bed in the middle of, I think it's like Broad Street yeah. in front of the Broad <laughs> Holy Museum. Shit. Um, and it's like a simple Ikea bed. Yeah. You know, living in LA, like you need a bed that just has four pieces that snap together and yeah, you're moving you around th- a lot. You throw your mattress on top and there you go. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was easy. And my nightstand that we brought in, it actually broke that day oh. when, uh, just like in the back of the U-Haul truck. Pour one out, man. I know. Sorry. And then I was like, you know what? Let's go on. I'll just go on Ikea.com and I'll buy a new one. There you go. Okay. So, but you're doing all that. Yeah. You're orchestrating that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it, but but the coolest part about it was like th- like the al- that album cover was like his vision and it was like all right like we take a picture of the bed and then we Photoshop but it's, but no that's too hard I don't know how to work Photoshop so yeah. we actually got to bring a bed downtown so and a camera on a tripod and just a slow you know just a like a sh- like a like a slow shutter you know picture yeah and uh, yeah we we make it happen. So was it, was that around the time where you like were taking on like much more and you were becoming more than just a tour manager? Uh, it, it was around that time. Um, that would be a good time frame to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, the other manager was, was still there, but it was, you know, it was still very much like, Hey, you know, we're going to, you know, we're doing everything, but it's like, you know, so one needs to be there on the, on the front lines to kind of quarterback everything. Yeah. So you're becoming almost like the day to day. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Cause like, I'm just thinking back to that time and like, it's just so funny. Like it's that attitude where it's like the amount of things, the times where I'll talk to you and you're telling me about the projects you're working on so many times. I'm just like, well, fuck that's, that's heavy, man. Are you sure that I, I, who, who are you going to hire to do that? And you're like, Oh, I'll just do it. Yeah. It's always just, <laughs> Oh, I'll just do it. But you actually do it. Like where a lot of people will talk about like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this. I got this. Like every time you kind of quietly just show up and it's done. It's just done. Was there like a learning curve for you for that? Like, was there a point where you're like, Oh shit, like Jake and I are about to go just take this on. Just, you know, there, there were times where I delegated work to other people and they just don't do it. Yeah. So it's just like, all right, well I just learned that, if you need something done right, you just got to do it yourself. Damn. And because no one's going to do it better than you. Damn. I mean, again, like that confidence that you have and you backed it with that work, but you did like there, were there ever any like challenges or moments like as you are taking on more? Cause like, again, it's not like it's by this time, it's not like he was a small artist. Like his career had grown to a point where like when you're talking about like advancing shows or I mean, that's all your TM stuff that you were already doing. But like when you're talking about all these projects you're putting together, you have a real audience and you have really big shows and you have real production and you have like all of this. Like, Mm -hmm. did you ever have any of like those oh shit fumble moments or were you just in it? I was just in it, you know? So it's like, I've always put myself in a position with everything where I'm almost like, you know, and in, in my head, like if I make it that, I'm the second band member, mm-hmm. like I'm the second member or I'm like the silent member of a group or something. Mm-hmm. That's kind of been like always like my thought process. Like, all right, like, like I'm like, I'm in it just as much as that, 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 you know, that person is. Yeah. So if they're putting, you know, you know, 10,000 hours in, so do I. Yeah. You know, so where and everyone what? does like their own thing. Like, you know, if, you know, someone else writes the music and, you know, cr- makes it creative for that. And then someone else needs to, book the tour and someone else needs to order the merch and someone else needs to do this and that, you know? So while Jake is writing the songs and keeping the fan base alive and just being the artist, you're just behind the scenes putting in your 10,000 hours yeah. of getting the merch done and putting the tours together. Cause you were even booking like at a very high level, there was a minute where you were acting as the agent, right? Yeah. And you were, I mean, how big were these shows and these venues that you were like, booking? you know, anything from like a, 500 600 house blues size venue yeah and like because like again like there's been so many times where you've helped me with like contracts and like you you know how to like read a contract and get paid Mm -hmm. correctly and you know the back end and all that and like just just knowing the deals but you but i learned that from being the promoter right 
previously. So it's right. like, you know, learning, you know, it's like, okay, like, you know, lo- looking at deal memos and being like, ah, like, like, that's dumb. Yeah. But guess right. what? You know, can't say that I didn't do that when I was booking shows. You just know what to look for because yeah. you did it. So, damn. Okay. So you're doing that. And another like really cool thing happened with Jake that I kind of watched from afar and I think probably watched it because I was so impressed by you on that side of it. But like, again, where normally an artist can stop working with their manager or their label or their agent, things can regress. That didn't happen. It just Mm -hmm. got bigger. Yeah. Like you guys went out and did those tours and sold them out. Yeah. We went to Europe, you know, we, we, you know, we went to Europe, you know, and had a ton of fun. We came back to the U.S., had a tour here. It was great. Had a lot of fun. Did another tour here. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, a couple tours later, you know, four, you know, we're approaching four tours later, um, and we're still having fun. Do you think that's, that is like to, do you think that translates to the fan base that's supporting you? Like, do you think that they feel the care and the fact that like you guys are, cause you know, every time I talk to you, like, again, like you're smiling when you're getting emails, like it's never, there's never a day where you're like really stressed out. Like you're excited. Like, do you think the fans feel it? And do you think that oh, was yeah. a piece of the success that kept it going? He, he has some of, some of the like most diehard fans that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, and, and I see it and, and, you know, on Twitter, you know, like, like they'll tweet you, oh my God, you know, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And it's great. It's awesome. You know, I love, you know, seeing that. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just gratifying. Yeah. To know that, okay, like, you know, that these 10,000 hours that I put in, yeah. these 10,000, you know, 10,000 hours that he put in, you know, people realize that and they appreciate it. Yeah. What's your favorite part of it? Like when you're in it now and like, cause like you're doing everything. So like what, like, are there any of the, like the specific moments where you kind of stop and reflect and you're just like, fuck, this is cool. Oh, uh, there, there's so many times like, you know, there, there's some, there, there, there's been a lot of cool places that, touring has has brought us to perform if it be on a cruise you know damn or we did a show once on alcatraz island no way um what out off like san francisco yeah no um, way and what's really cool about that is there's only been three performers ever perform like three musical acts ever, how are ever people performed. getting there ferry boats whoa well that is for, so impractical for, why are you doing show what whose <laughs> idea uh, it, it was a big corporate event out there. Okay. And so rewind to like 19 X, Y, Z, yeah. uh, when the prison was open, yeah. Johnny Cash performed there. Oh, I didn't know back. that. Um, I, I guess no one really does unless they were in the prison. Whoa. <laughs> um, oh, well, of course he has that song Alcatraz prison blues. So I should have put it together. Folsom. I know. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> But uh, so uh, uh, Johnny Cash performed there. I don't remember that show, but um, I do remember when Jake Miller and Neon Trees performed at Alcatraz Island. Damn. Um, and yeah, they it was it was a ferry boat, and I re- remember it very well because it was like a well, it w- would just go between Alcatraz Island and mainland, and then back and around. I think it'd be like two, three, or four laps. Mm-hmm. And it was like shuttling people back and forth or shuttling them to the island. Mm-hmm. And on on the shuttle from, from Alcatraz back to shore, it was just like us and neon trees just like chatting <laughs> about the, you know, just like anything random that we could think about. You know, never met these, you know, never met these, these people, people before. Yeah. Um, it was just a fun time. And then uh, a couple of years later, we actually connected back up at a uh, like a jingle ball style event that uh, Jake was on, and so were they. And it was cool, like relive that Alcatraz Island. Uh, you yeah, know, that's a pretty special boat, moment. Like, like people don't really moment. forget that. Yeah. So definitely some highlights in touring yeah. and like the special places it's taking you because you've pretty much traveled the entire world now. Yeah. Um, I'll, Europe. North America for the most part. 
Um, haven't really done anything in like Asia. Okay. Like, you know, I would love to go to Japan and China and all those places, but I feel like, I feel like going there first as like a tourist would be like cooler than going there first is in touring. Yeah. Cause I, like I, I, I love seeing places and one of the coolest things that, that we like to do when, when we're on tour is arrive to cities as early as possible and leave as late as possible. Wow. Just to get the whole experience, even yeah. if it's Atlanta. Even like to this day, like it's yeah. like that. Oh, the touring. You're not you know, jaded on that side. Like you're always looking for new stuff there. We're, all, you know, we're always trying to get the places early. You know, there's, there's never reason to get the places late. Um, you know, and you know, there's, there's shit that could be done. There's promo yeah. that, that you can do before a show there. Yeah, because that's another grind that you guys are so heavily on. Like, you're literally back today. No, you got back yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and you, again, like, booked almost, like, oh, you booked a promo circuit of radio stuff. Yeah. Where you guys were just out doing that. Yeah, J- you know, uh, Jake's with a label now that is great and lets him, you know, he's 100%, you know, has his creative freedom, you know, you know, creative freedom yeah. with making music. And they're, you know, they have a great team there that, uh, has a an awesome radio department and they're you know they're badasses yeah <laughs> so. and they probably love you like to just like sit down and be like oh whoa cool yeah so we need all this oh scooter will just do it <laughs> sweet kind of pretty much <laughs> that's great but now nah, it it's it's a really good team there and they keep us busy yeah and when they don't keep us busy, you know, in between, you know, we keep ourselves busy, you know, like we'll find stuff. We'll go golfing, even though I suck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the mall. And even though I don't buy anything, I, I think looking at shit is more cooler than buying stuff. Cause that's also like, that's a very real dynamic. Like that's not fake. Like you guys are friends. Mm-hmm. Cause again, like I, like I know you so much more, but I remember like at that little, like, what was it? That little radio promo show at that club in LA you invited me out to Ah, uh, Sayers. Oh, Sayers Club. Club. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, just, like, the, seeing you guys, like, even that, like, even when he's on and being, like, artist Jake and, you know, talking to all these people, like, just the dynamic of you two and, like, the friendship, like, you just see it. Like, you guys are friends. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's really special. And I, I don't think, what I admire most or, like, what I see in your story is, like, one props to him for seeing you put in all this work. But like, it's cool to see you guys grow together and to see like both of those strengths shine so much because like that fearlessness combined with that artist that cares, like, damn. Yeah. No. And, uh, just the grind just never stops. You know, there's, there's always work that can be done. The big ass smile on your face right now. (laughs) So like, what are you, uh, what are you excited about now? Like, is there... I don't know, like what's up next or like, what's the grind? Like what, when you think of the grind next or like, what are you excited to crack into? Uh, I, I'm excited to crack into this tour that kicks off in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's um, soon. Yeah. So he, so he's touring. Tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, he's touring pretty much the whole month of April, um, into Mar in, in, into May. I don't know my, my months. Remember, I, I didn't graduate college. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How could I forget? They teach April, you the months March. in college. Like, yeah. <laughs> Go, we're going backwards. Yeah. Um, April, May, um, he's, he's, he's on the road. Um, we're bringing out uh, Logan Henderson. He's another act that's also on Red as, as well. Nice. Um, and it's just a, you know, just a good circle of people. Yeah. Um, you know, all good people, all positive energy. Um, just go out there every day and just kick ass. Yeah. When it comes to like that tour, the crew, the production, how involved are you with that? Like, I I don't know, like, I don't know your guys' production for the tour or anything like that. Uh, for, for uh, this tour, it's, you know, it, it's, it's pretty simple production that, that we're bringing, you know, um, it's just, you know, a lot of new songs for, for the kids. Yeah. Um, so Jake has an EP coming out. Um, it will probably be out by the time that the, uh, a podcast comes out. It's called Based on a True Story. And uh, I just actually got a notification from his bands in town. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, okay, cool. Um, oh, yeah. So I was asking, though, um, with, like, the production and all that, like, is that a side? Because we've never even talked about that. Like, are you a piece of that? Like, do you set that up or do you rent whatever needs to be rented? And We rent what needs to be rented. We, you know, uh, you know, you look at what the rental cost is for a seven-week tour and you're like, 
all right, well, that's rental cost. How much is it to buy it? Oh, it's cheaper to buy it than it is to rent it. Oh, no way. You don't rent it if it's cheaper to buy it. Did you, you guys own your own production? No. Oh, well, oh. well, certain pieces, you know. Got it. You know, um, yeah. so like, you know, a wireless microphone, for instance. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, uh, we'll, you know, we'll buy stuff that we're going to keep reusing, yeah. you know, or, you know, hey, you know, that light over there, you know, that light is, you know, more to rent than it is to buy. Just go out and buy the light. Sure. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, totally. And I feel like, I, again, like it just like that, um, that like you just paying attention. Like I feel like every time I talk to you about work or anything that you're on, things that you say so nonchalantly is just you like from the day you were looking at that marquee in middle school, like you just pay attention. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. Just, just look at it. Yeah. That's, that's all you could do. You could just look at it. And it's, it's so funny too. Cause like, I feel like sometimes I'll hang out with you and I'll be all stressed out about something or whatever. And like, it almost like, not that it annoys me, but like, I just like every time, like it's just so simple. Like you're just instantly, well, well no, no, dude, like you're good. It's this, yeah. it's this. And I'm just like, fuck, he's right. Like it's, I it's really that. admire it. Yeah. Damn. So yeah, you're, you're getting ready to do another tour. Um, another tour followed by, um, some more, promo following the tour yeah um you know with the song right now it's it's already cracking top 40 so wow we're just you know we're you know we're ready to take it to number one so it's kind of <laughs> like it's the same as it ever was right like it's like you have all these new level ups but like here you are and it's just back to the grind yeah. like just go do the thing let's do it i love that um well damn i mean i feel like that pretty much tells the story um I guess like another a, a piece again because I really don't know who's going to be listening or all, any of that but I do think that you're such a good example of like what somebody behind the scenes so closely working with an artist be it on the management side on the TM side on the any side that you've fulfilled I feel like you do have such like a good example set yeah. do you have any advice like if you were to like sit down with a kid that was in any way trying to follow a path like yours like were there any pieces along the way where you're just like, like, is there any like solid advice that you could give there or anything that comes to mind? Uh, just, just, just keep going. Just keep learning. Um, you know, nothing is really a mistake. Um, it's just, you know, the, might cost you a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> solid. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, but just, just keep working, you know, and, and just know that if you're doing something that someone else couldn't do and you did something wrong, well, it doesn't really matter because they don't know how to do it. So if, if you do it wrong, are they going to know? Probably not. But it, it, it's always, it's always right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I love that advice because just that right there encompasses so much of what you do. Like you just exude that confidence of like, yeah, it's right. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Like, like we'll make it, we'll, we'll, we'll make it to tomorrow. Yeah. That's awesome. And then kind of on that same line, like if you were to go back, like, was there any, is there any step of the way, like where you look back at your path um, and you wish you could have like taught yourself something or learned something earlier? Like I know kind of the journey unfolds in its own way, but like, Looking back, is there anything that you wish you could have learned sooner? Probably to not eat meat earlier. <laughs> I wish I stopped oh, yeah? eating meat a couple years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you're vegetarian or vegan. I don't honestly know. Pescatarian, we'll call okay. it. Okay. I, I I still eat fish. And why? But um, I don't eat dairy. Like, like, what did that do for your life? Like, when you changed the game? I I just have more excitement. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I'm always interested in that. I feel like my, you know, my thing is just try to eat healthy, whatever. Yeah, but before I came here, I had an acai bowl. Okay. All right. It was really good. Nice. Damn. Okay. So that, that's, uh, that's cool. That's not even like a deep, like business side of it, but just like your own life, yeah. just your own life habits. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, damn dude. I don't know. I feel like we did this thing, huh? We did it. We made it. I feel good about it. I'm really excited. Thank you. End. Thank you for coming, dude. Of like, course. I'm so excited to, to have your story and to yeah. hear it. It's cool. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. I'll see you in podcast land. Yes. <laughs>
So there you have it, my friend Scooter. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you're young and trying to have a similar career, I think that he sets an incredible example of just the work to be done and what he's put in. Uh, If you're already established, I hope that there was some amount of inspiration there. And if you don't know anything about music, I hope you just enjoyed a story of me hanging out with my pal. Um, Lastly, please, please subscribe to the podcast and leave it five stars if you like it. From everything that I can tell, that gives so much help to spreading it and growing it. Um, along with sharing it on social media. So screenshot it. I've been looking super closely just to see anybody sharing and I've been so excited. So if you liked it, it would mean so much to me if you shared it. And if you didn't like it, pretend you never heard it. Don't say anything about it. And I am so sorry that I wasted an hour and a half of your time. All right, I'm out. Yo, my bad, I'm back. Uh, I forgot to tell you our social media handles. Scooter is Scott Neb on Instagram. So that's S C O T T N E B B. And his Twitter is S C O T T 2 H 2 O. And I'm Andrew underscore FTW on everything. All right. Bye for real.